Hi, it's me Tina Amir and welcome to my channel. So for today, we're going to learn about Malay excuses. But before I begin, for this video, I'm just going to use informal pronunciation. For those of you who still not clear yet what is informal pronunciation, please watch my number 53 video which is about confusing pronunciation so our topic for today is malay excuses excuse in malay is alasan so excuses is alasan alasan however for speaking even though former malay we actually repeat indication for plural but not every case is like that but we're gonna go to that topic in other time but for speaking even though many excuses we just say alasan many excuses banyak alasan okay but this is just stereotype video because our people known for procrastination maybe because we don't have four seasons so we have nothing to rush but not all malays like that this is stereotype as i mentioned not necessary all Malays like that. In case you generalize the one who don't have this kind of behavior, you will offend them very much. Anyway, let's move on to our lesson. Nanti. Nanti. So, nanti is later. In case Malay who likes to procrastinate tell you nanti or later, then the nanti is very subjective, you know. The nanti could be nanti tomorrow, you know, the day after tomorrow, maybe next week. So they will say nanti because nanti is so subjective. They will either say to you nanti or nanti lah. Both carry same meaning. Lah has no meaning here. So means later. Second one is sekejap lagi. Sekejap lagi lah. So sekejap lagi and sekejap lagi lah. Which basically means just a moment. It's another way of saying later also. But this one just a moment. But who knows when is sekejap lagi. So sekejap actually means like for short. Or some people just shorten to jap. Jap lagi. Or sekejap lagi. Lah you may add at the end or you may not. Doesn't matter. And lagi means again or more. So that's basically about sekejap lagi or sekejap lagi lah. And some will say eso. So they will promise you something. They say eso. Eso is tomorrow. Oh, eso lah. So that eso you need to clarify with them. Is it really eso? Is it really tomorrow? Maybe it's the day after tomorrow. So the day after tomorrow in Malay is lusa. So somebody also will make a promise to you and say lusa lah. Lusa lah. Or just lusa. So, lusa is the day after tomorrow. For these people, lusa also is subjective. Even though the meaning is actually the day after tomorrow. But it's really questionable for this kind of people. They will tell you next week, minggu depan. Next week, minggu depan. Oh, minggu depan lah. So, minggu is week. Depan is actually front. So, basically, minggu depan is next week. So, minggu depan lah. Oh. Minggu depan. Confirm with them. Is it really minggu depan or minggu depan-depan? You know? So, this is something you have to know. And then, somebody also will say to you, Tahun depan lah. Or just tahun depan. Tahun depan lah. Or tahun depan. So, tahun depan is next year. Year is tahun depan. is front. So, basically next year is tahun depan. So, for this tahun depan, but please confirm with them is it really next year or is it next next year you know that's about tahun depan sometimes you will lose your nerve with this kind of people and they will tell you sabar lah sabar lah sabar is patience lah no meaning so either they will say to you sabar or sabar lah so you impatient because of they are not punctual so they will tell you to be patient because of them so in this situation it looks like you are the bad guy not them okay so sabar lah be patient or in formal malay is actually bersabar prefix ber plus the root word sabar so bersabar okay be patient number eight this is very lame excuse malay like to give if they are lazy, but they don't like to say, I'm lazy, saya malas, you know. Not everyone will be comfortable to say, oh, I'm so lazy, saya malas. 
So you will say tak larat, tak larat. So tak from the word tidak, which means not. Larat is actually like able. So tak larat is like you don't have energy, okay? You say tak larat. So instead of you saying you are malas and people won't accept that kind of excuse, then you just say no energy, okay? Tak larat. In case if also somebody asks you to lift up something and maybe you also feel lazy to lift that up, maybe because it's heavy or maybe because you just don't want to, then you can also say tak larat because it's referred to energy, right? So you don't have the energy to lift that up. So you say tak larat. And another thing is our people don't like to be truthful sometimes because of our upbringing because of too much scolding if you telling the truth to the elders so they will like beat around the bush just to get away from something for example they don't want to lie to you because lie is obviously not nice so they will say something tak pasti tak pasti so tak pasti is not sure tak pasti not sure okay pasti is sure Tak from the word tidak, which means not. Okay, so tak pasti. But actually in their heart, they are sure. For example, they don't want to come to class. So if friend asks, will you come to class this afternoon? Then they will say tak pasti. But in their heart, they're sure they won't come. Okay, so they just say tak pasti to avoid maybe preaching from the friends or advice from the friend. And number 10 is insyaAllah. So, insyaAllah is Arabic word which means we got wheels. So, Allah is Arabic word for God. So, we got wheels actually you promise someone you will do something in the name of God which means if nothing come into your way, you will try to accomplish it. That's actually the meaning of insyaAllah. So, you make a promise to the person and you make a promise also to God mean if God wills, Okay, you really wanted to do something, then you will really do it. But somehow, some people here, it's bad for me to say, but they make fun of insha'Allah terms. In their heart, they sure they don't want it, but they will say insha'Allah. That's really bad culture. Don't take it, but that's how some people misuse the terms. For some people who strict about this, if people say insha'Allah, to them, they were really angry and asked, are you sure or not? They really want that kind of precise answer because they don't want people to cheat them. Anyway, we move on to the next one. Tak tahu lagi. Tak tahu lagi. So, when somebody asks you about something and maybe you don't want to say about it, then you just say, tak tahu lagi. It's an excuse, right? So, tak tahu Tak from the word tidak, which means not. Tahu is no. Lagi is actually again or most, but tak tahu lagi is don't know yet. Okay? Tak tahu lagi. Number 12, tak de. This is something really bad. You wanted to get away from the problem you created yourself or you put others into that, but you play with the religion. Okay, you make excuse with the religion. You fooling people just because they trust the religion blindly maybe. So you will say tak de Tuhan. So in case you intentionally screw up something, maybe fixing somebody's stuff and then they will ask you why it's broken, then you just say tak de. You trying to say like you do all your best and then it just doesn't go the way you want to. Actually, that's what it means by takde. Like you really work hard for that, but you don't get what you actually want to. But some people make fun of the term by fooling people around. Means they don't really do it with all their heart. They really not serious about it. And then they screw something and then they say takde. Just easy as that, just to get away. For example, you are working with the healthcare sector. And then you make a silly mistake maybe and it cost somebody else's life and instead you admit it's your fault and then you say it's that day, it's destiny. I believe certain thing is destiny but I also believe certain things people just misuse the word destiny to get away. So they will say something like this, dah tak de. Dah tak de. So, dah is from the word sudah, which means already. Tak de is destiny. So, it's like it's destiny. 
Oh, they will say, tak de Tuhan. Tak de Tuhan. God's destiny. But it's actually their fault. Okay, but then they blame the destiny, of course. Anyway, number 13, redo. Redo is Arabic term also, which means maybe you wish for something and you don't get it and you just accept the fate or you resign to the fate even if it's painful to you so it's red though so people who actually like i said they misuse the word for example they screw your stuff and then you said about it and then they say to you please red though but they are actually the one who should be responsible and take action not only for you to red though okay Anyway, number 14, you will often hear the word petang nanti or pagi nanti or malam nanti. So, nanti is later, right? Petang is afternoon, malam is night. So, petang nanti actually means this afternoon. So, you will ask me, what does it mean by petang ni? Ni from the word ini, which means this. So, petang ni and petang nanti have overlapping meaning which is this afternoon but this phrase has some cultural influence in it for example if people say to you petang nanti it means this afternoon or afternoon but later later a bit okay maybe late afternoon so it depends on individual how they mean with it so it's super subjective and next one I'm already here but no parking space. If you have meeting with someone, suddenly they still didn't turn out at the exact time or maybe even minutes after that or 30 minutes after that, they still not turn out. When you texted them, then they will say something like, I'm already here but no parking space. I'm already here, saya dah kat sini. Saya dah kat sini, saya I. Dah from the word sudah which means already. Here is di sini. Or we just replace that di for speaking to kat. Kat sini. But tapi no parking. Tak ada parking. Tapi tak ada parking. Or tapi parking tak ada. Tak from the word tidak which means not. De from the word ada which means have. So tak ada is like none. Okay. So no parking. Parking tak ada. Or because this is rainy country, so hujan or rain always an excuse for something. Why you didn't turn up yesterday? Why you didn't come? It's hujan. Or they will say something like hujan lebat, heavy rain. And then they will add more. Reboot, storm, very dangerous, sangat bahaya, bahaya sangat. Or next one, common also excuse, traffic jam. So, traffic jam in Malay is kesesakan lalu lintas. But people don't prefer to use the word kesesakan lalu lintas too long. So, we say traffic jam. Ada accident. So, ada have accident is kemalangan. So, ada accident. Or, this is something really frustrating. They will say, sorry, tak boleh datang. Or, sorry, tak boleh datang. Tiba-tiba ada hal. Tiba-tiba ada hal. So, sorry is maaf, right? But people here prefer to use the word sorry. Tak from the word tidak, which means not. Boleh is can. So, cannot tak boleh or tak leh. Datang is come. Tiba-tiba is suddenly. Ada is have. Hal is matter. So, basically it means to say, sorry cannot come. Suddenly, I have something coming up. And next one, saya sakit. Sakit is sick. So, I'm sick. Saya sakit. That's very lame excuse also. But some people afraid to lie because they afraid reason they lie with will chase them. You know, they will get that. But for some people, sakit is super subjective. Heartache also. Sakit. So, sakit hati, right? You have really not nice feeling to someone. That's also consider sakit to them. So, they will say saya sakit. Not necessarily the physical pain. Or, they late and then they say to you, Mak saya suruh ambil adik kat sekolah jap. Or, Mak saya suruh ambil adik jap kat sekolah. Basically, this mean, my mom asked me to fetch my younger, younger sister or younger brother at school. Jab is for a while. From the word sekejap. So, 
mak saya, my mother, saya is I, mak is mother. So, mak saya, my mother, suruh us or order, ambil from the word ambil, which means take. But for speaking, we just say ambil, adik is younger brother or sister. Kat sekolah is di sekolah. Sekolah is school, di or kat is at. So, job is for a while. So, they blame mom this time. Or, they also will say, if they turn up late for something, kelas baru habis. Kelas baru habis. So, in English, it means just finish class. Class is class. Baru is actually new or just. Habis is finish. So, kelas baru habis. So, now blaming the teacher. And then, next one. Saya tersesat. GPS bawa salah tempat. Saya tersesat. GPS bawa salah tempat. Oh, bawa tempat salah. So, saya tersesat. Sesat is actually lost. So, I'm lost. Saya tersesat. GPS bawa. The real word is actually bawa or bawa. But for speaking, we add the K at the back. So, bawa salah tempat. Salah is wrong. Tempat is place. So, saya tersesat. GPS bawa salah tempat. Okay, now blaming the GPS. I'm lost. GPS brought me to the wrong place. Oh, this is also common. My grandpa passed away. Atuk saya meninggal. Atuk saya meninggal. So, my grandpa. Grandpa is datuk. But we shorten to atuk. My grandpa. Atuk saya Pass away is meninggal dunia. Meninggal from the word tinggal which means live. Dunia is world. So, living the world is meninggal dunia but we just shorten to meninggal. So, my grandpa passed away. But actually, the grandpa passed away long, long time ago. And this is the last one and super common one on the way. So, on the way is dalam perjalanan. Dalam is in. Perjalanan is the way. Okay. So, dalam perjalanan. But nobody say like that because it's too long. So, you will say on the way. So, on the way is maybe you just open the room door or the house door on the way. So, on the way is super subjective and Malaysian really like to use that excuse. I guess that's our lesson for now. Thank you very much for watching me and if you like my video, please check out my Patreon page so that I can have more time to make more videos. For those of you who support me through this medium, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who's watching me right now, thank you very much. Until we meet again then, bye.